It's an odd day for us. We've got Water Day where we're kind of celebrating things getting back to normal. Maybe for some of you, school starting doesn't impact you, but for our ministry, it does a lot. And so we're excited about that normalcy, getting ready to start with some of our ministries. And we're going to get everybody out doing that really soon. But we're going to do some different things here this morning. Maybe the best way to characterize our time here today would be to say we're going to have a family meeting. Sometimes the family just kind of has to sit and talk and digest. And uh, I've got three things that I want to present to you. Uh, some of them we've already talked about. We have a little bit more information. Some of them, like the first one, we've tried to be as transparent as possible. But when you don't know as much, you can only say as much as you know. And that's what I'm going to do this time as well. I'm going to say as much as I know. And uh, because there's some confusion that's gone with this, I'm going to try to clarify some things that uh, we've get, been getting as feedback, okay? So I'm going to back up a little bit. Some of you have heard this story, but just uh, keep in mind that there are others who probably have been going to Waypoint since the beginning of the year that have not heard this, and so they need the backstory in order to understand where we're at right now. Uh, several years back, um, my wife... Uh, started dreaming about going back to grad school and getting um, a license for mental health counseling. So uh, we started having that conversation about what that would look like. And uh, it, it's a long process. Uh, we, are, um, <laughs> we are one week away from her being done with classes, and that cannot happen soon enough. It was awful, but good, right? It's good because it's about to be done. Um, but what happens is that she's going to follow that right up with a whole year of practicum and internship where she's actually going to be sitting down with clients and doing that sort of thing. This picture that you see on the screen right here is the picture that they have on the website uh, for her to start seeing clients. They're gathering those clients. She's going to uh, be a counselor in training down in Indianapolis. Um, I'm pretty sure underneath her photo it says, if you need a counselor with a lot of bling on their glasses, I'm your gal, right? She's getting it done. Um, if you noticed anything, you'll notice that she's doing this training down in Indianapolis. And that's because when we started talking about uh, several years ago, uh, the dream to allow Tracy to kind of pursue something that she wanted to do, that would uh, give real energy to her life. Uh, there was a second dream that we both had that was kind of working in the background as well, and that was that at some point we could find a way to, uh, to be near our grandkids. We want to be far more involved in their lives uh, than we are. We get to see them a little bit. And so as we talked about the timing of this, we realized that if she got this degree and then started a practice here, and then we moved that she would have to start her practice all over again. And honestly, um, my wife has been sacrificing for me for a long time. I've, I've been in ministry over 20 years. I was at another church before this one. And so she sacrificed a lot, and we realized that um, this was an opportunity for us to maybe do both of these things. And I'll tell you right now, I, I have had a belief for a long period of time that I should leave the mini ministry earlier rather than later. I shouldn't get to the point where, you know, it's the last thing I would want to do at 75 or something, go, time for me to retire. There's guys who do that. That's all great. For me, I've watched uh, what some of that does to the church, and I always thought it would be better if I would leave earlier. But I never had a sense of peace and when, uh, for when that was to be until we came to this decision. Uh, when we came to this decision... Uh, we realized that uh, this move was something that God um, was giving me uh, the ability to go and support both of these dreams at the same time. And so uh, we set out with one big hole in the whole plan, one big hole. I had no idea what I was going to do once I left the ministry. I had assumed that I would be done with ministry. I don't know uh, why I made that assumption. I think uh, I, I love uh, being in ministry here. I love the people here. The thought of going and getting used to another church culture, uh, I just didn't have much interest. And so I 
I looked at all kinds of other things. And as we vetted thing after thing after thing that I would do, we just kept saying, nope, nope, nope. Um, and then in December of last year, in January of this year, I had four different conversations with people, and I'm pretty sure they did not coordinate with each other. I'm fairly certain they did not. And they all asked the same question. Why are you assuming that ministry is not your, your path? And I realized I did not have a good answer for them. I, I didn't have um, a good why. And so as I began to pray about that, I realized that one of the reasons we were checking off no, no, no to things is because there was still something in me that wanted to be involved in ministry somewhere. So I, I sent out an email to a place in February, and um, I heard back from them. And at about the same time, uh, the AXIS team, which is kind of like our board, but a little bit different here, uh, I answered to them. Uh, they found out that ministry was back on the table for me, and uh, they met for a couple weeks in March, and they approached me with an idea that I didn't, I never would have considered would have been a possibility. Just didn't really, uh, I didn't think it was feasible or possible. But they asked if I would be willing to stay um, and continue to lead at Waypoint for two years while living in Indianapolis. So um, we're like, well, how's that going to work? And we came up with this plan. This is, how, this is what we're going to try. So in October 24, um, actually the year of 24, um, we're going to uh, have me on 26 times a year. Uh, when I'm on, I'll be here on that Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then I'll travel back down and spend uh, that weekend with Tracy. Um, if you're thinking, wow, man, I, I don't know, is that going to work out? <laughs> I don't know. Um, uh, is this going to work? Is it wise? I don't, I don't have any idea. Um, here's one of the things I can tell you. I am interested in it because I like messing around with experiments that could blow up in your face. That seems a very appealing to me, and I think this is kind of engaging. I think it could work. There's a lot of good things that are going on right now that we want to keep the momentum with. Um, but here's, here's the deal. In October of 24, Waypoint... And Tracy and I will evaluate how things are going. And if it's not good for our relationship, then, then we're going to wave the white flag and say, this is not working. I, I have looked at the time. And I can tell you right now, even doing this for half a year, I'll see my wife more than when she was in school. Like, that's not cool. Um, but that's true. I'll see her a lot more than when she was in school. So I, I think we're going to be okay, and we came together to kind of make that decision and decide, hey, this is exciting um, for you to kind of keep engaging in ministry, so it's okay. But Waypoint has the ability to say, this isn't working. And at that evaluation, if, if somebody hits the bailout clause, December of 24 will be my last month here. And we'll communicate that as we find out what's going on, all of that sort of thing. Um, Right now, we're listing our house sometime in October. We don't know when. Our plan is to move by December of this year. Again, these are details that we can't give you. This, these are our best guess estimates of what's going to happen. Um, but, but based on that, uh, this is how we're going to progress forward. And uh, in Let's see, March of 2025, if the plan stays intact, Waypoint will start looking for my replacement. And so they'll start advertising, and when that replacement is found, uh, then I'll be done here at Waypoint, and you, you'll know a whole more a lot about that when it's going on. We're going to be telling you who's going to be coming and candidating and all that kind of thing, uh, but we have a little bit of time. So I want to address just a few things um, that I've heard about this whole process, and hopefully I can put your minds to rest just a little bit. Um, some people are concerned that I was uh, pressured into doing this. Uh, here's what I can tell you. Todd, yeah, that's funny. Um, Todd Bliley claims that I have a spiritual gift of stubbornness. Now, I don't think that's a spiritual gift, but if it was, I'd be crushing it. 
Um, uh, I, I was asked to stay at Waypoint and live in the area multiple times. As you can tell by the plan, we're moving to Indianapolis. We're going to get near our grandkids, and my wife's going to start her practice down there. Those goals are intact. The only thing that's changed is the part that I didn't even think was a possibility, that I'd get to stay involved here, and, um, and we chose that uh, together. There, um, Tracy and I uh, both talked about that, prayed about that for a couple weeks before we said yes. And um, so, well, I think I said yes before, and then I dragged her into it a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. Um, I think she's going to talk to me about that later, I think. Um, but I'm just telling you, it, it wasn't about uh, that kind of pressurized situation. Uh, the other thing I've heard is that because I'm going to be living in Indianapolis, I'm already checked out. I, I, that, here's the best I can do for you. Just go talk to the staff and ask them if you think that's the case. It'd be better to talk to somebody who might know what's going on than just to talk to each other about stuff. Um, I, I already think I know what they'll say, but if I'm wrong, then there's something that you can find a way to explore and we can figure some stuff out. I would tell you, in the last year, my schedule has changed, but I've had a change in my health that's required far more rest than I expected. And I have had to adjust my schedule just to try to uh, stay pace with that. And so there are things that are different, but I don't think my level of engagement has changed. Okay? Uh, the last thing uh, that I've heard quite a bit is that what does all of this matter anyway, March 2025? Austin's already going to be the guy who's going to take over. Whoa. That would be news to everybody involved, including Austin. He has 18 months to decide if he wants to put his name in the ring for this role or not. And I can tell you right now, having conversations with him, he doesn't know what he's going to do. So I don't know how the outcome can be already finished if he's not even sure he's going to apply for the job. But here's how it's going to happen. If he wants the role, he's going to have to apply like everybody else when we throw the role open. He'll have to go through the interview process. He'll have to do the same thing that everybody else is doing. So that's, that's, that's the plan right now. And I've told you as much as I know, I've tried to be as clear as I can be about how we're doing it, uh, the safety measures that we put in place in case it's a terrible idea. Uh, but that's the direction we're going. And uh, if you have questions for me, I'll try to answer them. But I think I've told you everything I know, all right? Second thing I want to talk to you about is one of the reasons that uh, the Access team wanted me to stay here is that we have been dreaming for two years now about doing some sort of addition. And it's been, um, it's been difficult for a couple reasons. One, it's difficult because we were in a season where there were not very many contractors who were capable of giving us the time to do our kind of project. They were doing much larger projects, all very busy, and the cost of everything has inflated. We actually got through a process with somebody, got a number, and it was so far um, over our heads that I was thinking, well, maybe we could find a way to do some things and we could stretch and hit this. There was no, there was no stretching for this. So uh, we were sitting around uh, brainstorming because th the reason we were looking at this addition is because this space, this building that we have, gets used constantly. It's used during the day by our daycare. Uh, it's used at nights for different uh, sporting things in here. The youth group uses it um, a whole lot. Our student ministries does. Uh, and there starts to be tension with so much overlap. There are people who are looking for space and we can't help them or we got to have you leave right at this time so this group can come in. There's that kind of juggling going on right now. And, um, and we realized if, if we could give more space to our ministries, that would be effective. One of the ministries that really needs the space is one that um, I think we're all excited that goes on here at Waypoint. And, and you should know something, our, our student ministry is way bigger than a church our size would normally have. 
We, we have, a, we have a, a youth group the size of a mega church, honestly. It's why, it's why in the last year, there have been several mega churches that have called and have tried to hire Mitchell out from underneath us because they know he can run a ministry that size, right? But he's still here because he loves being here. And when you ask him, hey, what do you need? His answer is, man, if we just had another meeting space where the two ministries could meet at the same time, that would really be helpful. And uh, the, that's awesome, and that's difficult because meeting space is expensive. It's different finishes. You have to have nicer flooring, nicer walls, all that kind of stuff. You have to have sound and audio equipment in it, and you have to have supporting spaces. If, if you have a nice meeting space, you have to maybe have a little lobby, some more bathrooms nearby, and we had all of that in that first plan that we got bid out, and, and we got that number back that I just like started choking up blood on. I was like, I, yeah, we can't do this. Like, we can't even reach for this. And so um, we were sitting around brainstorming, like, what to do, and, uh, and Nick kind of just stated the obvious at one point in the, in the meeting. He said, don't we already have that space? Like, we have a lobby, we have restrooms, and we have the space. Why don't we just build a gym instead? Now, that's interesting, because gyms are less costly to construct. The finishes aren't as expensive. There's not very many walls in a gym. You're not having to create tons of extra bathroom space or lobby space for a gym. And so we started kicking around the idea of redesigning the whole building. And did he show you some of those? Okay, so he showed you some of these. And if you read really carefully, it says it's an idea. We um, were in the process... Next week, we're going to evaluate if we're going to sign a contract with somebody to design this building. I've got to do a little more value engineering because I just discovered that we have some septic um, tanks out here. There are lift stations that the building would sit on that we had to move, and it's going to cost $30,000 to move it. So we're about to construct around those tanks. I don't know what that building's going to look like, but we're going to save $30,000. It's going to be awesome. So... Just let me draw some plans. We'll come up with something. But eventually, there'll be a set of plans. And, um, and I'm cautiously optimistic. Uh, the goal would be to finish the gymnasium in this space complete. And then we would turn our attention to this room. The basketball hoops would come out. The flooring would come out. We'd put down some nice carpet. We'd put in a permanent sound and tech booth back there so we don't have to keep rolling out all of our equipment. It's not good on it. Uh, we probably would change some lights, put in some sound treatment that wouldn't be destroyed by balls, and turn this into a really high-quality auditorium that our youth could use and that we could use on the weekends. And we've turned away people who've been looking for space like this that we just said we can't, we can't give it to you during the, during the day. Our daycares in here during the day just wouldn't be possible. So that's our, that's our plan. The other two spaces, the offices and the classrooms, would be finished sometime down the road, down the road in the future when we had the money, and, and that's how we would go about it. Um, I don't know. The reason I'm cautiously optimistic is I don't know if we can hit our metrics on costs, but I think maybe we can. Um, so we'll let you know, and I want to tell you why that's important to us. For a long time now, Waypoint has been debt-free. We like the flexibility being debt-free gives us. We, we make decisions based on what's good for the ministry, not on whether it's good financially or not, because we save, we're cautious, um, and we're careful. So just this last week, uh, the youth and daycare just use this white van out here all the time and they need another one. So we just approved the purchase of another one. Why? Because we've been, we've been good enough with our money that when they needed it, we could just do it. We didn't have to go, oh, what do we do about... No, we, we're gonna, we can just go take care of this and make sure their ministry gets advanced. Uh, that's what we're hoping to do with this building. We've saved up money over years. 
Um, and if, it, if we can hit the right metrics, uh, we're going to build it um, from cash. And that's what we're going to try to do. So, so that's what we're uh, attempting to do. I don't know, again, if there's more that you need. But just so you understand, uh, we're going to try to get drawings done. Uh, then we'll send the drawings to state if we like them. Once they're approved, we're going to own the drawings. So we can give those out to different contractors. We'll get a bid. We'll keep you up to date if we find progress that is meaningful. Like if, if we're actually going down this path, we'll try to keep you updated as to what's going on, what kind of timeline we're looking at, how the bidding process is going, that sort of thing. Um, but that's happening, okay? Kind of excited about that. By the way, um, this is about a 12,000 square foot addition. And if you're like, man, that's, that's huge, that's really going to cause a lot of increase in cost, well, maybe, maybe not. Uh, I, many of you don't know this, but sitting on top of this roof right now are two big sections of solar panels. Uh, Waypoint hasn't paid for electricity in a year. And we're building up a massive credit. In fact, last year, in anticipation that we might eventually put on an addition, we added more panels so that our credit would get bigger. So once the building goes up, and I know you're going to find this as a surprise, I might try to put electric heat in as everything as possible, right? Because it's free. And, and then we're going to monitor it. And if we figure out, okay, we need more electric panels to stay break even, then we could do something like that. But right now, we are, we are paying $700 or less paying off these panels than we were on utilities. And when those get paid off for the next 20 to 25 years, Waypoint's going to save over $400,000 that we're going to turn back into ministry. This is the kind of stuff that we've been able to do uh, because of the way we choose to manage our finances. So um, that building will not add a huge drag if we do it right, and I think we can do it right. Uh, last thing uh, that I want to talk about, um, and I, just, I want to kind of be direct with you, we're not often this direct because I, I don't think high pressure works and I don't want this to be high pressure. I've not seen it be successful and so we don't do it very often. The, the flip side of that is sometimes things don't get communicated in a way that help everybody know what's going on. And so there's some loss of clarity there and I'm responsible for that. And so I'm, I want to try to uh, help you understand what's happening here. Uh, Waypoint's getting ready to actually increase our ministry footprint. We're going we're gonna to add a building. We're going to do more. We, our ministries are ready uh, for a little more flexibility and space to dream and grow and, and get bigger. But there's not a single thing we do here at Waypoint that can get done without you being involved. It's not possible. The water day that you see out here, you, you could find Lynn and Lynn. They're involved with um, all kinds of, like Lynn Bliley is involved with everything that kind of happens outside of Waypoint's walls, serving wise, that we do in the community and we do a ton. Lynn Christopoulos does all kinds of events. If you see a, an event around here, she probably has her hand on it in some way. And, and it's huge what they do. We're not looking for people to do the kind of hours that they do. It's ridiculous. You ought to thank them for everything they do for our community. It's, it's uh, unbelievable how much they do. They're not paid. Yes. But having you be involved is not a good idea. It's a God idea. I want, I want you to listen to this. This is in 1 Peter chapter 4. It says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. You have some sort of gift. It's not about you. It's about for the sake of others. And I can just tell you that um, there has been a shift in the culture that's very odd right now. Part of that shift definitely is church-related. There seems to be a shift away um, from younger people who are giving to the church, going to the churches, being involved with church ministries, all that sort of thing. You can see that if you can go and read about that. 
But there's another shift that seems to be happening in all kind of areas of life where people are starting to give less time, less energy, less resources to things that really only function if that happens. It's happening all across the country in every kind of area of life, not just church. And it's causing lots of problems. When I was in church, uh, they had this thing called the 80-20 rule. And it was known for the longest time that 20% of the people did 80% of the stuff inside a church. It was just accepted that was the way it was. But I saw that begin to change in the late 90s and in the 2000s, early 2000s. And when Waypoint uh, kind of was founded and started, the level of involvement we had was way over 20%, and it lasted for a long time. COVID came, and the deck got reshuffled. And when we came out on the other side, we've been about that 2080 for a little while, and we've been having difficulty seeing anything over that. And I'll, I'll just tell you right now, um, we have goals to go and make an impact on the community that we live in. Those will become impossible unless more people find a way to take their gifts and serve. Even if you just did a couple hours a week, five hours a month, and if you say to me, Blair, I'm really busy, here's what I've discovered. I like to ask busy people to do things. They're the most organized people I've ever found. They, they know how to prioritize. They know how to organize their time and do some stuff. And I'm just telling you, the church, what, what we're doing here is not a small thing. We are the answer. We're handing people Jesus, being Jesus in front of them. We are the answer for what ails our culture right now. We need more of our involvement, not less. And the only way to do that is for people just to do, just do your gift. Figure out what that is and just give it, some of it, to other people, not you. So after this service, out in the Lookout Hall, we've got a whole bunch of ministry set up. We've got uh, the weekend service where people are working really hard to help people come here and worship and connect with God. We've got a connection ministries where people are helping each other kind of connect and get to know each other in relationships. We've got student ministries, kid ministries. We've got women's ministry out there. We've got all, um, I know I'm missing one. But what is it? Daycare, yeah. There's actually hours that if you could uh, come and just help prepare lunches at uh, lunchtime for kids, it would take the strain off of that ministry a lot. There's all kinds of stuff that we could do together that won't get done unless we do it together. So I'm just going to ask you to look at your priorities and see if there's any way to fit just a little bit of time in for this community of people that you're involved with right now. So um, th that's all I'm asking for. Um, we're not going to twist your shoulder. I can tell you if you show interest, if you talk to somebody and say, I want to get more information, within 48 hours, somebody will talk to you about that ministry, try to figure out where you could get plugged in, where you might be able to be used. Even if it's just going into a kid's room and holding young kids like little babies that need help. We don't, we don't even have enough people to do those kinds of things right now. So uh, there are big jobs, there are small jobs, there are all kinds of things to be done. I hope you'll consider that, you know what, uh, God's taking Waypoint someplace, and you're on the ship right now with us. So get in and row. Jump on board. So as you have time, you can mill around, talk to different people out there, um, as that kind of comes to an end, you can make your way out uh, to the pavilion. There's going to be food. There's going to be water, slides, all kinds of activities out there for people as well. There is food, so I hope you'll stay and eat with us. Um, if you have any questions about anything I've talked about today, I'll be around in the lookout hall and outside um, all day. All right, let me pray with you.
uh, God, there is a lot of stuff uh, going on. There's, it's change. There's no other way to say it. There's going to be a lot of change. And generally speaking, uh, that can be uncomfortable. But I just ask um, that as change begins to happen, that the one thing that it could do is it could cause us to rely on you. I just ask that that would happen. That we would just uh, trust you as things shift and change, that you would give us uh, wisdom. God, we, uh, we pray as we, as we make plans that those plans for the new building, uh, we know they're in vain unless you build the house. And so we just ask that you would be involved in this process. Ask that you would give us wisdom as uh, Tracy and I are starting a new stage of life, that we'll be able to serve Waypoint well and uh, still find ways to uh, love the people here appropriately and be engaged. And God, I ask that you would allow people who are here to find a way to just be involved. Like, they, ha they have a gift. It's, it's for the sake of your kingdom. And if you could encourage them to use it just a little, just a little, it would make a big difference. So I ask that you would be present in our hearts, and go with us as we celebrate. Let us have a great time today. In Jesus' name, amen.